So he had three more hits tonight, a home run, a double, a single, a saved run, and it wasn't enough. But, boy, if he should get into the point where he leads the National League hitters, and, and Yelich is right up there, too. He's been yeah. 335 with two home runs tonight. He'd be the first rookie ever, I believe, in the National League to win a batting championship. That sounds right, Bob. I can't remember one. Of course, I can't remember Saturday. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he looks like a really nice player. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Kristen Yelich now, you know, getting into position where he could think about a triple crown. He's got 39 homers. I think he's one percentage point off the lead in the batting race. Uh, and a, four or five RBIs behind Josh Bell, who apparently is never going to have another one. So. We, yeah, exactly. And, and Josh Bell all of a sudden had a massive lead on both home runs and RBIs. And now uh, he's fallen way off the pace in home runs, and his RBI leadership is also in jeopardy. Uh, PA Ram 59, that's on Twitter at KD Pomp, at Gene Collier. He says, uh, concerning pitching for the 2020 season, what are the chances that it improves? The current staff is one of the poorest ERAs in the National League. In fact, tonight it went up to 5.12. One, two, that is second worst in the National League behind only Colorado. So, Gene, I would imagine they're intent on bringing every one of these guys back. And if so, what can you expect from the team that has a bunch of guys with a collective ERA over five, and most of them are approaching five? Yeah, I mean, that's an excellent question. Any better? Uh, the only thing I can say is I, I can't see it getting any worse. Uh, of course, you have the, you know, the situation in flux with Jamison Tyon. It looks like he's not going to be able to start the uh, 2020 season on time. He was the ace. He won 14 games last year. Couldn't get past May 1st this year. Uh, Trevor Williams has been a disappointment this year. So is Joe Musgrave. Uh, Musgrove. So has Chris Archer. Um, so, yeah, I don't know where this rotation is going, and I don't think the Pirates know either. Yeah, but they need to add to it. Whether or not they do is anyone's guess. Let's go out to Clinton Altoona who kicks us off tonight. Hey, Clint, how are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for taking my call. I'm sure. Hey, yeah, yeah, a couple of musings here about the Pirates to try to make it quick. First off, um, you know, what the heck happened to the pitching since the first half um, when they were still in it, obviously? But uh, they still had the same pitchers that they did other than Lowes. And uh, secondly, um, this might be an off-the-wall question, but what do you think, like, Guys like Greg Brown, you know, John Wayne or Bob Walk, when they're off the air, talk about, you know, how bad this team is. <laughs> and uh, third, uh, can't guys come out and just be honest and answer questions honestly? Like, you know, that the brawl in, uh, with Cincinnati, that Jared Hughes hit, uh, you know, Marte said he didn't do it on purpose. Come on. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, guess what? If you say you did it, you get a 10-game suspension like Keller did. Maybe being honest doesn't pay off because you're compromising the code. You're not supposed to do that. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know, Clint. Uh, thanks for the call. Ask those questions, Gene. What do you think guys talk about? I think they do normal stuff like we all do. Yeah. We I talk. Think, no, I think they're a little more candid when the microphone's not on. I think, I think that's true of any broadcast team, sure. whether your team's uh, good or bad. Uh, and as for the first, what happened to the pitching, I mean, that's what the Pirates are trying to figure out. Pitching does go up and down, but uh, this, one's, uh, this pitching's been going down for too long. Well, if you were to sit here right now as we are, who would be your ace next year? Tyone's not going to start the season with them. Right. He's out six to nine months, and I would imagine he's going to take his time coming back, and you don't know what he's going to be like. Uh, very unfortunate set of um, uh, hand that he got there, but sure. at this point it would be who, Trevor Williams, as Trevor your Williams. ace? Yep. Well, is that good enough? No, yeah. I think you have to go out and way. get more, don't no. you? No, it's the same thing with Joe Musgrove. I mean, you know, Chris Archer's capable of putting a couple of good starts together here in August and September, and the, and the Pirates are thus capable of saying, okay, he's our ace. But I do not believe in him. I, the Pirates really have to go out and get some uh, starting pitching, and it's not going to be easy to get because a lot of teams need it. Mike in Bethel Park joins us on the sports call. Hey, Mike. Yeah, hey, guys. Uh, hopefully this isn't a bad question. Uh, is there any way baseball can step in and force the Pirates to sell? I know the Clippers were forced to sell, and – the well, that was a Clippers was a different situation. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I don't I don't think that that can be the case. Can that be the case, Gene? Thanks for the call, Mike. Never heard of anything. I never like heard that. of that. The Clippers like situation was a case where the owner embarrassed the, right. the league and the. the there was a lot of pressure. He had to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the asking price was not anywhere close to two billion. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think you're going to see anything like that. I think you're going to see. Uh, someone named Nutting owned the Pirates for as long as we all shall live. Rich, Scott Township, you're next on the Ireland Contracting. Nightly Sports Call. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, yes, uh, this morning's paper, Huntington, says, uh, to quote him, uh, 
that uh, Agersaw and, and Brault uh, both have done enough to keep their spots. They can't bring Mitch Keller up because of those two. Lack of opportunity, he said. Trevor which, Williams. I'm sorry. Uh, Joe Musco and Chris Archer continue to need to build for next season. Does that make any sense to you guys? You know, what doesn't make sense is that he says there's no opportunity for Mitch Keller to be here. And I'm sorry, would you tell me there's plenty of opportunity. In fact, I would insist that he comes up here and pitches regularly until the end of the year. If you're going to evaluate him, why not get a two-month head start? They did that with certain guys last year. Um, Pablo Reyes came up, played well, and because of that was thought of uh, differently heading into spring training and made the roster that went back down. All I'm saying is why not take an opportunity when you are not going to be in this race to do something about it. Yeah, if you're going to answer a question like that, and you know, I have a lot of respect for Neil, but if you're going to answer a question like that, you know, spin some analytics, say he doesn't have enough innings or he doesn't have enough, uh, he doesn't have the right splits against this or that, don't say it's because we have no room up here. you got one of the worst pitching staffs in baseball. There's plenty of room. It really is. Line two we go. It's Pete in Squirrel Hill. Pete, what's up? Hey, guys, how are you tonight? Hey, Pete. Hey, Bob, about the Granky deal with the trade deadline in mm -hmm. Houston. Nobody's talking about this, Bob. Number one, obviously, it was to bolster their chances to win a World Series this year. Oh, sure. But most importantly, Bob, Eric Cole is gone. His contract is up. He will be in the Dodger uniform next year as a free agent. That has been his dream in life since he was 10 years old to play for the Dodgers. And remember where you heard this first. The major blockbuster deal in baseball next year, it may be in the offseason or during the season, Francisco Lindor will go to the Dodgers for a bunch of prospects. Thank you. All right. Well, Dodgers don't have many holes in their lineup right now. Right, that one down, Lindor to the Dodgers. Yeah, for and a Cole. bunch of and Cole. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out Cole, but it could be Anaheim, too. It could be anyone on the West Coast. And um, I do know his asking price is going to be high, and he deserves that based on what he's done. If they brought Granke in because they're going to lose Cole, that still means they're going to spend an awful lot of money on Zach Granke and Verlander as the top two. And it's still a pretty good top two when you think about it. How many years does Granke have left? Because he's getting like $30 million. Yeah, but he's been pretty good this year too. So, yeah. you know, I don't know. But still, if that's their de facto or fallback position, that's fine. I would take Zach Granke as my number two, wouldn't you? Sure. Three. He could be number three. They have, a, they have some good pitchers down there in that uh, system as well. All right, we're going to take a break here. We have more calls on the way, more tweets on the way. We'll be back with more of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call right after this.